<laughs> you know what I was wondering just now? Do people ever come up to you and they, and they say like, petite or like, <laughs> you know? Uh, Do people ever uh, like mess up your name? All the time, all the time. Let's just say random, you're kind of just some other. I'm glad to see that uh, most of us are social distancing, right? Like we could totally have this conversation in person, but we are not at those levels in this country yet. Exactly. Um, of, uh, <laughs> social distancing. <laughs> but it seems like you are social media distancing. Because if people yeah. go to your Instagram, they'll only see four posts, right? Yeah. I'm just over social media. Like, I think there's, I think maybe, you know, in this day and age, people are censoring everything and people are just like, you know, there's so many things that you have to, like, so many rules that you have to, like, adhere to. Uh, adhere to on social media, you know, and it's become this, like, it's almost like they're trying to replace, like, reality and, like, with you know with technology or something you know yeah and i guess it's easier to control us on social media so sometimes i post stuff i guess which you know which twitter or like facebook or instagram or whatever might not be in line with you know so they end up like shadow banning me and like <laughs> <laughs> like doing these like stupid things so, so what i've started to do is i've just like I'm just focusing on just like putting out stuff for like what I'm doing, you know, like work stuff, like music. Yeah. But I'm just gonna start doing it. But I, yeah, I just I also started like I also started my own sort of like um, a page just for like personal stuff, you know, where I just post oh. like whatever I want, you know. So I rather grow, you know, my career speaking my truth than like, you know, and doing it like. Uh, smart you know like mm. you know and not like giving in too much into what people want us to give into so you know so I guess having that mentality has come with its <laughs> you know the downfalls yeah and I and I think it's just made I guess it's made me just sort of become smarter about the way that I use social media you know the way that I use like the way that I say things the way that I you know yeah um could, yeah, you know, so that's why I've sort of just, you know, social um, media distance. distance. <laughs> yeah. So I was, I was wondering about your uh, social media distancing because I was thinking maybe because you have a new EP out, everything that came before April 2020 felt like a distraction to people. That yes, was, that exactly. Was that's, that's that's another reason actually it was the like la maison noir stuff it's like it's all this done like the stuff that came all the stuff that came before this time right now it's it's a uh, it's done for me you know i'm in a new i'm in a new phase i'm a new person like yeah it's a whole new situation and i don't want to keep holding on to those things and i think especially right now this very time you know 2020 you know this very moment is a moment where we all actually like recreating ourselves or rebirthing mm -hmm. ourselves yeah i feel a lot like of things i'm like the new you know it's time to get ready for like the new so i just thought you know what let me completely change so even if you look at the the cover for the ep it's like me in this like colonial way you know where i was, like yeah. just came out of like hyper african narrative you know so yeah. even that so was just sort of like yeah Sure. So tell me a little bit about that, because I mean, we were going to get to it later, but um, you and the incredible Rara Nembat work together, mm -hmm. right? And she's a creative director. So yeah. to me, like I didn't even, um, there's a word for, for that shit. Uh, I'll tell you now what I, what I found online. Um, oh, it says that it's called a colonial pirate shirt. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, yeah. okay, there are, there are palm trees in the background. You know, you've got the Jan van Riebeck Stees, you know, 180 from what you've been doing in the last two bodies of work. What was the thinking exactly. behind that? 
exactly you know i mean the last body of work you know was i guess i was in a different space you know whereas this one we shot it at the mount nelson and yeah. obviously the the gear yeah in cape town yeah the gear you know went with the whole vibe um i think personally you know we love to i love to we love to i guess leave people to d- decide whatever they want to get from that and we didn't like and i don't want to force my like opinion my like what is like my art and people and they start explaining and stuff but okay cool yeah. so the the ep's got two tracks right and you worked on it with the dj and producer kingdom yeah um yeah. so did you guys record two tracks specifically for the ep or did you record a whole bunch of tracks and then only two made it uh no we did two tracks so basically he sent me like a whole lot of music like not this new year's but the new year's before right mm-hmm. and then i i used to love kingdom back when i was like 23 like when i was younger 21 like not How so old are you now? <laughs> i know i'm 29 now okay <laughs> so I think the the last time you interviewed me, I was like twenty one or something, <laughs> like twenty or something. Like that. The first time but, I interviewed uh, you, you might have been twenty one, but the last time yeah. was for your debut, so you might have been like twenty five or so. Oh really? Oh yeah, hectic. Yeah, <laughs> you really. <laughs> it's, been, it's been a real. So I can say I've watched you grow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, so you but, uh, basically what music. Yeah, listening to Kingdom like a lot, like I loved like his production and stuff like that. And you know how things sometimes go like people, you know, the he I guess I I didn't really hear him for for a while. I think he dropped some music like a few years ago, like two tracks of like scissor and stuff like that, but then I wasn't really hearing much of him because he used to own, he used to run this label called Fate to Mind, and that label was like that. They were just releasing the most amazing music, yeah, like dance music and stuff like that. So I've always sort of had like this connection with him and the people on his label. So once he, um, uh, yeah, so yeah, so I hit so oh, so then I sort of got acquainted with this label that basically ran he he's labeled basically okay um, and the guy was like yeah we no kingdom and he's actually signed here so do you want some music from them and i was like yeah i'd love some music from them and um i sent me like a whole lot of tracks and then i really just chose i just chose like two of the best beats okay and then just recorded on them yeah oh dope so then, how do you get to the point where you're like, I'm going to call it Kerr or like Heart World? What, where did the idea of the heart and the world together come? Yeah, so there was this image that we made with Lena, right? And it was me and Michelle with like this red sort of uh, paint on our heads, right? Yeah. And uh, I called it Heart World right but no one else agreed on that name so <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't really called hard world so yeah. so I, that was like maybe like two three years ago and i just had this I, this name hard world on my such a long time and i guess now um during this time uh i just felt like it was uh, was just the relevant name to post during this like COVID thing to call it like call the EP Hard World because it was like it's also like in the music it's like has this theme around like love around like being so in love with someone but they're not necessarily replicating the love but it's like it's like why am I so like interested in this person you know it's like mm. almost like they're putting this kind of like spell on me you know it's like but they're not loving me back, you know? Yeah. And then the second track was, so basically it's like this play, I'm like, you know, like loving this person that almost puts like the spell on you. And then the other track is more about like 
the same situation, but it's like, it's fine, you know, God loves me anyway, you know what I'm trying to say? <laughs> That is so funny. Like, I'm glad you don't have to love me because God loves me. <laughs> exactly. That's why it's like, God loves me anyway, you know. And it's like, and I've just also started to realize, you know, it's like, there's like, there's a, you know, maybe like, there is this sort of like thing. I don't have to be like, you know, because there's so much pressure in this being like, it's like pop artists, you know, like mm. making pop music, getting on the radio, like making like trap hits you know like using a specific like language in your music you know so that it can yeah. connect with people or whatever you know but it's like i don't you know i just for me i just i'm finding it really hard to like adapt to this idea you know that doesn't sort of like match with that it doesn't match with like specific you know, genre it doesn't match with yeah. like a specific type of like sound or like language or whatever. But then you're not gonna like push it. You, so know, you, you spoke about uh, control, right? And yes. On the first track, which is called "Alive," um, yeah, it seems like you're singing about wanting to be under the control of this voodoo girl, right? But the voodoo yes, girl, yes, exactly. Is, doesn't care. She's not really. trying to, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right? The Hulu girl doesn't care, basically, right? Yeah. yeah. So in this case, then, based on what you've just said, is the voodoo girl this alluring fame monster? This pop world? Is that the voodoo girl? Basically, exactly. It could be. You know, sometimes we talk about these things unconsciously. You know what I'm trying to say? I even had dreams about, like, I've been having weird dreams, like about like being controlled and all these things. Maybe this is why my mind is like just like, you know, I think about that stuff a lot, like the government and like how they're trying to control people. But also having like, you know, family in government situations, I'm always like, you know, I, I, I look at things and I'm like, but actually, you know, some of these things are actually true, you know. Yeah. So, but anyway. Okay. So. So, so I just keep in mind, sometimes I think about it and stuff like that. I'm interested in like how, you know, c control and how I can contribute to this like thing in my own way, you know. So basically, so, you know, the whole like pop vibe and how like, you know, how you can't be, uh, you, 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 they try to control the your output, they try to control the music that you want to create, you know, they try to control the music that, gets to the actual people, yeah. you know, which is not, a, which I don't think is really fair on a lot of people because it's like, I guess at the same time, you know, there's, it has to sort of be controlled in a way, but I do definitely feel like, you know, there is space for, for more, yeah. you know what I'm trying to say? There's, there's definitely space for people are, people want to see more, but we just constantly bombarded with this lifestyle with like, no, you need to be like this, you need to dress like this, you need to wear these type of clothes, you need to, and all, you need to drink, you need to, you know, this, you need to drink that. And all this music, all the, sorry, all the stuff gets like put into, uh, into our music, into, yeah. into how, into us, basically. It's get, we get, we sort of get into like, we put ourselves in like this jail, like, oh, I can't do this, I can't be myself, so I have to just be this type of person, I have to wear jewelry, even though I don't like jewelry, I have to do this, you know. So, yeah. we're, so we're stuck in like all these like illusions of what we should actually be, you know. So basically that whole EP was just like sending a love, sending love to the world and just saying like, if you, I can do what I want, you know. <laughs> okay, but you also, you also seem to, aside from saying, if you because in alive you're not saying if you you're saying i want to nah. be so i want to be um I exactly. want to be me. but you also um sing about um the journey home i think and you say when yeah. i go home i like to energize for the journey right for the journey exactly yeah what does that mean how so, do you energize for the journey so, so um so basically um it's like I'm when I go home. It's like I am not really 
accepted in the way that people expect me to be accepted in, you know, or they not expect me to be accepted or like the way I expect to be accepted. Yeah. Does that make sense? Like, so it says when you go, I think what, what some people might not know is your, uh, your dad is from the Democratic Republic of the Congo, right? Yes. And your mom is from Angola. Yeah, she's like from Northern Angola, yeah. And you were raised predominantly in Cape Town. So when you say yeah. home, which one do you mean? Do you feel like all of them? But this, are- is, this is the thing though. It's like, we are, it's like, it's, you know, I've had to create my own home. So for me, myself, it's like, I am my home. So it's like, it's like, it's, it's, it's deep, but it doesn't have to be that deep because it's like in the actual song, you know, and like, the, it's like, I'm basically telling this woman, like, do you want to have a drink with me? You know, do you want to come back to my place? This is usually where I come back to, you know, to energize or to like, to, you know, but do you want to come back home with me and have a drink? It's only me and you, you know? Okay. So this is like, it makes like the start of like, a relationship with this person makes me ask them for like on on a good day yeah your if we think about your debut album and even uh the la maison noire yeah my french is french but you know what i'm saying um with those two projects it seemed like you had this um influence on layering vocals and on yeah the- you like enunciate and you are like deliberately slow in your delivery. Um, is in, that a um, make? Wait, on, on La Maison Noire. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think it's always kind of this thing of where I guess I am. I feel like with this new project, it definitely made me more um i was less experimental with yeah. this project um because of the way that i think with this project i was more going to towards having a cleaner sound yeah and like even with la via bell it's um, it's still very layered. It's still layered in um, your lyrics. It's layered in the actual yeah. vocals. Um, but with this EP, it seems like you you pull back a little bit. You make things a bit simpler. Yeah, definitely, one hundred percent. Because this uh, this new, I guess, this two track that came out now was more um was a bit easier to make if that makes sense i wasn't yeah. involved in the like actual process like the process of making the beat as much as i was with la maison Noir, you know yeah like la maison Noir, i really had like something to say like it was yeah. like okay cool because i was it was i was exploring myself i was um uh i was finding just going to diff- like a different phase i guess you know in my life that I'm like, you know, just going back to Congo, shooting everything in Congo, even while I was there, I was like discovering it more, you know, it was, I was working closely with the, uh, with the producer, like all the, the instrumentation, I had like a clear, not a clear vision, but I had like a vision of what I like, what I wanted to say in terms of the, or like, of the actual music, like the drums, the yeah. guitars, the, you know stuff like that like every like the composition exactly everything sort of like meant something mm. you know everything was like i really thought about it like this i really i want these jumps to be like this because you know they you know and plus also a lot of the the work on la base on noir i started uh i started working on myself so I wrote like everything, then I went to produce and then worked on it. Where this one was more like, got the beats and then I sang on the beats and then sent them back to the guy, you know? Yeah. Okay. Which is not, yeah. All right, so on uh, Through the Bad Times, which is the second and the last song, 
um, uh, team. It seems like you're a bit undecided. Like you want your space, but you also want all the attention. You know? Like yeah. Left alone. <laughs> you don't want to be left alone, but you also want your space. Exactly. Um, yeah, again, I mean, it's, it's very much about um, uh, relationships and the, the like ups and downs of relationships. You know? yeah. um, but again, it goes back to the thing we were talking about, uh, the deeper meaning. Meaning how, you know, it's like you want it, but you don't want it. You know what I'm trying to say? It's like you want this idea of the pop world, but at the same time, you don't want the idea of the pop world. You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, I mean, you sing about the good times, the bad times, and the times we live through. What makes yeah. them golden, though? Because then you have this refrain about them being golden. So, so it's like this idea of there is all this, um, uh, we're going through all this craziness, you know, um, but at the same time, God is in control, you know. Mm. So I was like, the ending was more to sort of like give it a bit of like a release, you know, like, okay. You know, there's all this like, oh, this girl doesn't want me, this guy, uh, or like, you know, all this like crazy relationship up and down stuff. But then at the end, it's like this release of, but everything is going to be okay, you know, through the good times and through the bad times. And basically, like, the end part was actually it was sort of like this idea of having this, um, it was a bit of like, church coming out in there in terms of like just the melody mm. uh, not necessarily like the the singing but just like in terms of like the melodies the way that uh yeah you know like god just god, god is in control basically yeah so that's the the golden thread yeah basically that's the the main thing that throughout the Okay, so before I let you go, um, it seems like the world as we know it has obviously changed and the music industry as we know it is not going to be the same. So what is the future for good music? Um, I think the future for good music is just being free and doing what you want to do, you know, and just not really listening to what, you know, and twisting the tables around because right now there are too many people that aren't necessarily wow. making music, making decisions on what, you know, music should be or what your output should be, you know, because it's like, yeah. not only do you have people in the music world, like, it's like you get like, you know, the suits and stuff that are in like the label, that work for like the labels and but then you also get like alcohol companies that think that they have a say on what yep. is cool and what is, when they don't. I feel you, but I think we're gonna stop there. <laughs> um, Sorry. And hopefully you and I will be able to see each other in real life and have yeah. all of these in-depth conversations because I think they are needed. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for speaking to me. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Thank you very much for the interview.